Are we alone? One of the oldest and most haunting questions humanity has ever asked. We gaze into the night sky and see trillions of stars, each potentially hosting planets, each planet possibly harboring life. It's a mathematical near certainty that life, intelligent life, should exist somewhere out there. And yet, despite all the data, all the probability, and all the time the universe has had to evolve, we've heard nothing. No signal, no signs, just silence. And not the silence of a quiet room. This is a cosmic silence. A vacuum of voices in a universe that should be overflowing with them. We've been listening, we've been watching. We've been sending our own signals into the void. Radio waves, spacecraft with golden records, burst of encoded language and music. We pointed massive radio telescopes at distant stars and waited patiently. And still, the result is the same. Nothing. No matter how far we reach or how long we listen, the universe has not spoken back. And that's where the paradox begins. Let me introduce you to Fermi's Paradox. In 1950, physicist Enrico Fermi posed the simple yet devastating question, where is everybody? If the universe is billions of years old, and intelligent civilizations have had ample time to rise, explore, and expand, why haven't we seen any evidence of them? No aliens, no spacecraft, no Dyson spheres, not even a faint radio whisper in the void. It just doesn't add up. The silence isn't just puzzling, it's deeply disturbing. With the vast, unfathomable reach of the cosmos, and all the stars and dust that lay in between, how is it possible that we are seemingly the only example of life? And yet, there might be an answer. To begin with, we have to consider one simple truth. Distance is terrifyingly real. The speed of light. 186,000 miles per second might seem fast but in the context of the cosmos it's unbearably slow even if we're receiving a message from a civilization just a thousand light years away a relatively short distance on the galactic scale that message would have been sent during the height of the Roman Empire communication between civilizations could span centuries millennia or even more by the time we hear a message, the sender might be long dead. And by the time we respond, we might be too. Light is fast, but the universe is faster. The cosmic silence might not be due to absence, but due to delay. Even with that in mind, the absence of any detectable signs of advanced life remains unsettling. And so we look for other explanations, theories, hypotheses answers. Some are hopeful, others not so much. One of the most sobering ideas is known as the Great Filter. The Great Filter theory suggests that somewhere along the evolutionary path, from the formation of simple molecules to the rise of spacefaring civilizations, there exists a hurdle so massive, so improbable, that almost nothing makes it past. This could be the leap from non-life to life, from single-celled to multicellular organisms, from primitive tribes to modern technological societies. If this great filter lies between us, we might be exceptional. We may have already passed the test that stops most life from ever advancing. That would make us rare, perhaps even scarce in the cosmic sense. But if the great filter lies ahead of us, the outlook changes. That would mean intelligent civilizations are common, 
but almost all of them collapse before they can spread through the stars. That's something. War. Ecological catastrophe. Artificial intelligence. Or some unknown existential threat. Inevitably ends them. In this scenario, we are not special. Just early. Standing at the precipice of a silent graveyard. Unaware that we're about to step into it. The Fermi Paradox, then becomes a warning. The reason the universe is silent is because civilizations don't stay loud for long. Another explanation, strange in its implications, is the zoo hypothesis. According to this theory, we are not alone at all. We're simply being ignored. Imagine a galactic community, ancient, advanced, and hidden observing Earth from afar. To them, we're infants, primitive, loud, dangerous, and unpredictable. It would be like watching a tiger cub stumble around with claws it doesn't understand. Perhaps there are rules, a kind of cosmic prime directive, prohibiting interference until we reach a certain level of technological or ethical maturity. Maybe first contact is reserved for species who pass a test we haven't even realized we're taking. In that case, the silence is not absence, it's restraint. Deliberate silence. A veil pulled over us while the rest of the galaxy watches behind glass, waiting to see what we become. And Fermi's question, where is everybody, might have an ironic answer. They're right there, watching. Some scientists suggest another possibility timing. Maybe we're just too early. The universe is 13.8 billion years old, but complex life on Earth only developed a few hundred million years ago. What if the conditions for intelligent life are only now starting to ripen across the galaxy? In that case, we might be among the very first. The Vanguard. A long flame in a dark room that will eventually be filled with other lights. But there's a darker reflection of this idea. What if we're too late? What if others came before us and are now gone? The universe may have already birthed countless civilizations. Civilizations that rose, thrived, and then perished, leaving behind only cold, empty planets and ruins lost to time. In that case, we're not alone in this universe. We're just alone now. The Fermi Paradox might be the echo of a cosmos that once was full, but is now silent. And then there is the most unsettling theory of all. The Dark Forest Hypothesis. Popularized by the novel The Three-Body Problem, this theory posits that the universe is not a peaceful frontier. It's a battlefield, a silent, paranoid, endless forest where every civilization is a hunter, armed and hiding. Because in a universe where you can't know the intentions of other intelligent species, silence becomes survival. To reveal yourself, to make noise, send signals or reach out, is to risk being seen as a threat. And in a game where the stakes are extinction, the safest move is to stay quiet. In that sense, the universe is not empty, it's hiding. Every planet, every star system, potentially harboring intelligent life, but all of them too afraid to speak. And we? We've already spoken. We sent our coordinates into the dark. We've lit a fire in a forest we don't understand. Maybe that's bravery. Or maybe it's a fatal mistake. In either case, it could explain why the others are silent. Because in the dark forest, silence is the only defense. But after all the theories, probabilities, and fears, there's one final quiet possibility. Maybe we are alone. Maybe against all odds, Earth is the only cradle of life. 
the only planet to give rise to thought, the only consciousness adrift in a sea of silence. It's the most chilling answer of all, not because it means that there's no one else, but because it means everything we are, everything we think and feel and dream, exists nowhere else in the observable universe. No backup, no neighbors, no second chance. If that's true, then the silence isn't hostile, it's tragic. And it leaves us with a staggering responsibility. To survive, to preserve life, to think, to wonder, to look up and keep asking the question. The Fermi Paradox isn't just a scientific riddle. It's a mirror. It forces us to confront not only the absence of others, but the nature of ourselves. It's a question about the cosmos, yes, but it's also a question about who we are, what we value, and how we choose to live with the unknown. It asks us to face the silence with curiosity, not fear. To reach into the void, not with desperation, but with hope. Because whether we are the first to speak, the last to listen, or the only ones here at all, what we do matters. So are we alone? We don't know. And that's what makes the question worth asking. Because in searching for others, we might discover ourselves. May you continue to venture into the unknown. And as always, thank you for watching.